Okay, my recording is in progress, and we are getting ready to go on to a Facebook. I think we're on live on Facebook. Okay, we're being live streamed. Okay, everything is cool. All right. Uh, let me see here. I need to. Uh, I need to do something here. Can you hold on for a second, folks, while I adjust something that uh, needs to be somewhat semi-adjusted? And that's my uh, my. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. All righty. And we are set to go. I'm just was trying to reframe myself so I would look okay. And we've got some people waiting in the waiting room. Um, so we'll just admit them and the rest will probably be coming shortly. Uh, and uh, 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 hey, uh, there's Steve Bender and Edward Berger is here as well. And uh, Len LaFrisco will be joining and Scott Boddicker has got to be admitted here. Uh, my wife is on the phone talking to her girlfriend which she does every day. And if she doesn't do it, she feels horrible about it. Oh, that's a very lovely orange parka you have on today, Scott. Sweatshirt, yeah. Thank uh, you. Is it a sweatshirt? Sweatshirt, yeah. Just sweatshirt. Well, it, it's kind of, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, I didn't I didn't notice that. It's cold here today, man. It was 80 yesterday and about 38 today. The temperature now in New York is 74, right? Oh, uh, Steve Bender, it's a beautiful, lucky you. beautiful <laughs> Beautiful. Is. I, I was out. Let me guess. Is it, is it going to snow tomorrow? <laughs> snow oh, tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, I was out in, out in the park for a couple hours this afternoon. It's beautiful. I took a little walk uh, today. I haven't walked in so long that I can't walk as far as I used to. I've got to build up to it again, you know. But then again, Steve Bender is what, 15 years younger than me or something? Yeah. Something like that. 15, 16, 16, yeah. yeah, enough. Oh, here, here she comes already. Okay, here comes uh, Marjorie for our little gathering today. Uh, and uh, hello to all of you. Hey, yeah, that's great. Uh, out in Texas, we got Scott and Charlie, and here in New York, we got Scott and me and Marjorie, and in California, we got Len LaFrisco. So that's a pretty good beginning for this. Let's see who else joins us today as well. Oh, here comes. Oh, we forgot. Another New Yorker is about to join us. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, is he wearing? There he is. He had <laughs> he had his cataract oh, surgery. Oh, yeah. Only one eye. Well, they only do one at a time. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Alex made it sound like he had. No, there's more to go. You know, I got mine maybe what? eight years ago something like that i don't know but i got mine before you yeah and they have not changed the technology on the cup that goes over your eye oh yeah you know to begin with it's just a cup and then they tape it yeah. to and your then eye. they take it off tomorrow yeah yeah exactly you're good to go and then they check you out and then you're going to go you're going to go do uh, uh, another one in, in a, a so couple two of weeks, weeks from today two weeks will be the today. right eye yeah and then he'll be, uh, be uh, you, you probably find your eyesight is even better. I found that for the longest time. Well, it better be because otherwise I spent a lot of money just for the same eyesight I had to do. Well, no, what I'm saying is. You know what I did? I kept redoing my long distance glasses. I kept yeah. using them because I didn't like totally trust that this was happening. The long distance glasses? Well, that's what the, that's what the eye surgery is for. It's not for reading glasses. Well, no, but it's not for it's not for it's for you. You get these, your lens goes bad. Yeah, I guess crystal. It's yeah, well, well it's, 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 it's not the for left reading. eye was for driving and distance. The other eye is for close up. I think. Yeah, like they're two different cataracts going right. On. It, it, or or they're, they're two different cataracts. Corneas. Yeah. Well, corneas, whatever they call them. Yeah. Well, anyway, when they replaced mine, I find I found I could actually read without glasses, you know, which uh, isn't supposed to be a side effect of it, but it was. And then when I had my eyes done recently, I have to use glasses again. I don't huh. know why. I have no idea. And my eye doctor who did the, the, uh, the surgery, right, for the eyes, see how bright I look? Yeah. Uh, it, it did the eye surgery. 
And this wasn't cosmetic, folks. This was because when your when your eyelid goes down over your pupil, 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 your pupil, <laughs> pupil. And, and uh, you know, is is there uh, halfway? It does inhibit your vision. So it is a medical th- procedure. So they did it. So you say. What? What do you mean, so I say? So you say? No, they didn't do it because of cosmetic reasons. Here, Charlie's got his hand up. He has. I was going to talk about something else, but. Oh, Charlie, let's get off this. We can move on. (laughs) That that is a. It was affecting your vision. That's why you had to do the eyelid thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was not. There was not, not, not if I if I wanted to get cosmetic, I get rid of these too, you know. So I was gonna say about my brother on his cataract surgery actually got bifocal corneas put in. So he really? doesn't need reading. He paid extra for that. So the, the top of whatever is if, he actually can from looking down at the bottom, he can actually read without glasses. Wow. Without glasses. Oh wow. I have I have to use reading glasses to read. I have to use reading glasses too. But I, I I don't have I can see distances perfectly 2020 vision. Me too. Me I, I too. Had since I was nine years old, you know I I never I just uh, for two years I was still reaching for my glasses when I woke well, up. Well, that that's what I did. I kept I kept looking at you know long distances with my glasses in the movies. I kept my glasses. Yeah. Here are my reading glasses. <laughs> yeah, you probably still need them, you know. But it, but I, you, what will be fixed is there's a certain blurriness you get. I mine was in the center of my eye. It was like oh. I looked straight ahead. I everything on the side was clear, but in the center it was blurry. And I had to, I could hardly drive at night before I had my cataract surgery. Oh, I couldn't. I I don't drive at night at the moment. Yeah. So, so yeah. I can do that now. Ever since I had the surgery six years ago, and and since then, I can drive at night. I can see it. I can. It just blows my mind to be able to, to see billboards and stuff without glasses on. You know, I can read. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, also, I find that with the with the thing I did with my eyelids, I can lie in bed and watch television now. Before I couldn't because of the droopiness. You know. So. Mm. So anyway, it, it's, uh, it's uh, that was uh, that was pretty good. You know, I guess. Yeah. Hey, it was easy. So know? anyway, uh, we just lost all the young people. I might possibly want to <laughs> listen to this program. We will never learn. We will never, never learn. It's uh, the Medicare crowd. Yeah, we open up and there's <laughs> Shecky looking like a 100-year-old man with his eye operation that he just had. He really will be better off for a second oh yeah oh yeah I'm, no believe me it couldn't have been easier no you know what would have been better off is if he didn't get the cataract problem yeah and then he didn't have to do this but he has to do it so you know hey you hey, know it's Ver- only money vernon nunn is joining us hello vernon well i have to wait for him to turn on his audio but we say hello to vernon and nunn right Who's wearing glasses? Every, let's see who's wearing glasses here. Lynn Lafrisco's wearing glasses. Uh, Scott uh, was wearing glasses. You lying piece of garbage. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't. I don't really need them when I do the show. So I don't. I don't wear them. But it would be better because then it covers the bags and the eyes. Um, but, I've been wearing glasses since fifth grade. And I, yeah, I've never taken them off, really. Just Really? You've just been a kid that always had to wear glasses. Yeah. And, and I, you, got my, I got my mother's eyes and my dad's teeth. He had you, great teeth and she had terrible eyes and I got those things. So that's not bad. <laughs> yeah. But what But, ha- but what, you know, um, it, it, why didn't you, couldn't you ever go and get like contacts or something like that? I guess, but I, I guess these have become a... I don't know. It's part of me. I don't know. It's like my look. Part of your look. Yeah. Because the nose and the mustache come off with the glasses. That makes it a lot easier. <laughs> what, com- what comedian, Shecky, do we know that wore fake glasses because they needed them comedically? Drew Carey. Groucho. Groucho. Drew, Drew yeah. Carey. God had his eyes fixed. But he Bobby kept- Clark had the painted on eyeglasses. Who did? Bobby Clark was a oh. comedian in the 20s, 30s, into the 50s. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
Now, somebody signing on called what's her name? <laughs> uh, hello, what's her name? <laughs> I thought I'd get you good on that one. Oh, because last week I couldn't remember your name. Listen, I I, I gotta tell you, I've been having the worst time with Ukraine. I somehow now I just remembered it, but sometimes if I'm discussing it, I go in that country, I can't. So I'm now I think United Kingdom, England, UK, and then it's raining outside. And that's how I remember it. Wow. Wow. But for some reason, I had this, this blank, you know, it's totally fine. I was just trying to, I know, get a jolly out of it. <laughs> I was just watching it. I think Wednesday, I finally got around to watching it back and got to that part. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> What's your <laughs> name? <I'll show> you. <laughs> no, I was referring to Marjorie. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. How's everything down in Georgia? It's good. We're, it's was beautiful here this weekend. I don't know how y'all's weekend weather was. We had it like the fall spring, the second fall spring. Like we have three or four. It's like, you know, 78 degrees. And fall sunny. springs. What is yeah. it? It's the uh, kind of the prick teasing spring. <laughs> it's like, it, no, it's like, it's like it, it makes you think, oh, God, it's 74 degrees right now. And I walked outside and it was wonderful. And I, I you know, didn't even have to wear a sweater or anything or a sweatshirt. And, and then you go the next day, it's supposed to be what tomorrow? 33? 31. 31. <laughs> yeah, the nurse said that to me. It's like 70 today. She goes, yeah, by Wednesday, it's going to be like 30. And they're talking about snow. Oh, okay. <laughs> It'll yeah. never stick. We didn't, we didn't get any real snow this year. We had that one minor six-inch snowstorm, I think it was. Yeah, but then by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the sun came out and it melted it. Oh, by the way, to all the youngsters watching the show right now, the other thing that old people talk about besides their health is the weather. The weather. The weather. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, uh, but I, I uh, yeah, the weather is, you know, something i changed my um i, I don't want to get political particularly but i changed my uh, my facebook uh picture i saw that yeah to the afghanistan flag and it seems like you've got a little the bit crane of the crane flag. Flag. yeah yeah the crane, not afghanistan excuse me <laughs> <laughs> you can't keep up with your wars I, I, yeah <laughs> exactly. nice uh but I just, I just, I've been so, I mean, uh, and again, this isn't political, but I've been so bothered by this. You know, I don't think I've been bothered by anything that's been going on in the world like I feel about. I, I don't think I felt this way about the people in Syria. How about the closest gas station to me this morning it was 6.45 for fucking gas? Well, oh, my God. It's yeah. finally $4 a gallon here in Texas. Now, my cool. My question is, would you rather we get our gas from Russia and bring the price down? Of course. <laughs> See, there's your alternative. You know, uh, if we all want to help, that's how we suffer. You know, I don't suffer because I don't own a car. Complain about. How, how was gas down there? It's it's like it just top four. It's, you know, some places it might be a little less, but there's so many people bitching about it. I get so sick of hearing it. I'll tell you something. I'm in California. The reason he's got 645. Well, it's it, a different blend, isn't it? But no, it, it's also, forget that. It's just all the taxes they have. Yes, they yeah, a lot, a lot of taxes. In, in California, they just 30, run 39 cents a gallon plus tax. Now, can I, can I do one of these 82 year old when I was a boy numbers on you? Mm-hmm. When I was a boy, they used to have a thing called price wars gas wars oh yeah in which all of a sudden one gas station would lower their price down to nothing and somebody else would lower it lower and the next one would lower it lower and we would have these gas wars we were living with gas wars and we went wow keep these gas wars coming i remember gasoline at nine cents a gallon Jeez. wow yeah and then it was normally 19 cents a gallon okay 
I can remember back into the 45 to 50 cents a gallon range. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I think when I started driving it, I remember being 99 cents. Yeah, 79, 89 when I started driving. Mm -hmm. yeah. When I first started driving, I believe, I'm trying to remember, but I'm, I'm remembering something like 29 cents a gallon. My dad always used to say six gallons for a dollar was what he remembered. So Yeah. I remember the big scandal when prices in, in 73 during that oil crisis, uh, when prices finally topped a dollar a gallon. Everybody yep. was so angry about that. Well, how's gas yeah. doing up there, Mike, where you live in Canada? Expensive as fuck, Alex. Huh? It's expensive as fuck. Well, what's expensive <laughs> as fuck? Well, we do the liter thing here, right? It's it's over two dollars a liter, um, which is oh, I'm you know early oh, this a gallon, seven dollars something, seven something. Yeah, it's 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 unbelievable. Hmm. Well, take me to your liter. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'd rather pay ten dollars a gallon to get rid of Putin. Yeah. Well, you may be. Um, do you think he is ill? Do you think he is ill and he's doing this as a last ditch effort to be yes. a trick? Yeah. Yes. Well, how many people do this when they're when they're well? Well, <laughs> you yeah. know, I mean, come on. He's got nothing to live for. You That's know, what if, I think. You know, he wants to get that. the old band back together. Again, yeah, I don't I, unite Russia and the old Soviet Union. I don't want to get political yes. on the show, but I don't think this is a political discussion. I think this is just a discussion and about. No. Uh, well, war, the world. Yeah. And um, I read today that, you know, Russia says they've lost 420 people. Yeah. The, the current estimate is they've lost over 11,000 troops. Wow. Good. You know, and I think, you know, the, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in Ukraine, I think maybe they've lost 500. I don't think he expected quite the, uh, the amount of pushback yeah get. yeah yeah but uh i don't know i'm just i'm one of these people who go hey we'll challenge you we're going in there we're going to do what we can because it's human rights and you know it's it's helping humanity we're just going to do it you come along and try and give us your world war three i don't think he will oh mm. he will he will you think he will? Crazy. He's that nuts huh? i do yeah i I, th I think biden's doing a good thing by just you know Letting it kind of play out without us getting too involved. Give him a reason to drop the bomb on him. Hmm. Hey, listen, you know, I'm all for World War III because that will uh, allow us to have more free parking spots. <laughs> you know? It'll solve the population problem. It'll solve the population problem. And if we're lucky, they'll basically just hit red states. You know, it will, I, also, it, it will also uh, cure uh, climate change yeah. because yeah. all that nuclear debris in the air will block the sun out and everything will <laughs> become nuclear winter so yeah. exactly <laughs> exactly but anyway i mean we don't want to get too political about stuff but it's just it's one of those stories that you just kind of get upset by yeah you know how can you not get upset by it uh and uh there's our old friend from uh where are you where are you located again uh, i'm trying uh, yeah my mind is just Oh, so, like Detroit area. Yeah. Put put your name up there. Would you please? I can't. We've gone through this a thousand yeah. times. I don't. Because the only I, way I remember names is if they're there. So what we, happened to Brian? What? He always skips me if it's not because yeah, of okay. Mandy, 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 you know. <laughs> uh, Mandy, Mandy, Mandy. That's Mandy, all I like. Mandy, Mandy. Uh, Jason, Jason, Jason. <laughs> well, I will have to say, she looks considerably better than you do. To <laughs> but, you know, I think you need your reading glasses. In fact, in fact Marjorie, Marjorie actually looks Marjorie actually looks younger than you. So <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. I missed what happened. I was talking to somebody. What happened? What happened? I just heard my name. What happened? Well, I was talking to this same old Alex skips me and just talks Mandy, Mandy, Mandy. And <laughs> like I'm not even here. It's gonna be here. How's that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good to see you, Brian. Great to see you, Marjorie. 
<laughs> hey, Marjorie, everything that's coming, that says, I just sent a package that says Alex Bennett. Really, it's for you, okay? Why didn't you send it to me? Yeah. Well, because Alex is being bad right now. That's why. It's going to go to you. He's now. always bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we've been joined by we've been joined by Brian Neary, oh. and he was complaining about what's her name. <laughs> and I'm trying to remember the name of owner, Jason. <laughs> Jason, uh, Jason, Jason. of course. Let me let me do. I'll, this. I'll get See, a I, name tag. I'll put it I on can, here. I can actually I can actually do this. See, I, can I like owner. It. But this is this will only hold as long as we're talking. Okay, yeah. it goes away by I, next time. Yeah, I've got. Third billing to what's her name and owner. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, fourth billing to Edward Berger, who hasn't said a word today on this show. That's right. I'm here for emergencies. <laughs> <laughs> Ever know when they when they crop up. Have you have you had that voice since you were a kid? I guess so. You could have been in movies. Do you remember yeah. who was who uh Shecky, uh, who is the um, where's Shecky? Yeah, there he is. Oh, 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 oh there, the guy, the guy with no, one eye. I've got there. so many people, I've, I've got so got many one people. good eye. I've got, <laughs> I've got so many people here that it's kind of hard for me to, you know, get it just right. But anyway, Rick, who is the who is the kid actor with the with the voice like that? Oh, the gravelly voice. Mason Reese. No, wasn't there a kid no, named no. like George Foghorn Winslow or something? Wasn't he one of the well, yeah, kids? but also Froggy McLaughlin, who was one of the final our gang kids in like yeah, 45. Froggy, Froggy, yeah. You could have you could have been Froggy if Froggy died. You could do the part. Uh -huh, yeah, he did I missed die. out on that. He died at like fifteen. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Motorci motorcycle accident. Oh, oh really? Wow. Yeah, seriously. Froggy? Yeah. Son of a bitch. He was trying to play Frogger and lost. I was hoping maybe Froggy was still alive. How many of those guys are still alive? Like Al 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 uh, Alfalfa got killed in a bar fight, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Fifty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. Scotty Beckett, needle in the arm. You know, go down the list. Oh, really? Chubby I died you. in 1936 at the age of like 16. Wow. Of what? Being overweight? Yeah, it was some kind of oh. glandular problem. Wow. Wow. Darla's still alive. Oh, no. She died oh. in the 70s. Oh, she died in the 70s. Because you know what she became? She became a Ken Murray girl. But she also became the voice of the Star Kiss. Um, Chicken of the Sea. Chicken of the Sea Mermaid. Oh, yeah. Wow. oh. Yeah. yeah. She probably made more money off of that than she ever did off the R Gang comedies. Probably. Oh, I'm sure she did. Because those kids, I'm sure when those things went to television stuff, they never made a penny off that. Oh, they did Hal Roach. He sold it off Lock, Stock, and Barrel to MGM in 38. Yeah. And that's why the rights to them all got screwed up over the years. Yeah. Well, the reason... Okay, a little trivia here. Tell them, Shecky, why were they called our gang, but when they went to television, they were called the Little Rascals? Because Hal Roach had sold off the name our gang to MGM. Mm. And he still owned the ones he produced. And they were renamed for television, the Little Rascals. See? Though in the 20s and early 30s, you would see on the original title card, Hal Roach presents his, his rascals. In an uh, art comedy. Oh, okay. Okay. So they got to keep the art gang name, but they didn't own. No, no. MGM owned the art gang name. Yeah. The name, but didn't That's own. That's why the ones from 38 to 45, which are made at MGM Studios, are art gang comedies. I see. Okay. All right. That makes sense. But the Roach era were renamed when he sold them to television, the Little Rascals. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Ah, a little trivia for all you. Batman yet? What? I said, have we talked Batman yet? No. No. Um, Love it or hate it. it. Don't, don't, I don't, don't have three don't hours start. to waste. Yeah, don't start, honey. <laughs> <laughs> don't start, honey. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Did you go see it, Shecky? No. Oh, okay. Because if you did, I'd say then you do have three hours to waste. 
Right. No, yeah. I'll waste the three hours when it hits Blu-ray or Ultra or HD or whatever the hell it's streaming. I, you know, I barely knew it was coming out this week. I never. You were looking forward to it, right, Rick? Because you're a big deal. Yes, but I'm not. I am not going to sit in a theater for three hours where they don't have intermission. Not that I need to go to the toilet. But if you remember, a movie that ran more than two hours and twenty minutes in the old days had quote an intermission. Yeah. Yeah. I had to change the reel. Yeah. I think you'll like. <laughs> well, I remember. Yeah. I remember like, movies that were three hours. Yeah, it did have an intermission. Always. Ten yeah. Commandments and Lawrence of Steve Arabia, Oliver, Oliver Gone with the Wind. Yeah. Go down the list. You think they? You you'd think at movie theaters they'd want to? Yeah, go back to the concession counter. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, go to the lobby. Yeah, even two thousand and one had an intermission, and that was only yeah. two and a half. That was only two and a half hours long. And where where did the intermission happen? I know exactly where. I know happened. exactly where it was too. When Hal was reading their lips in the pod, in, in the pods, and yeah. reading their lips, and then it went to intermission. And you went out, you got yourself some more popcorn and you got yourself some candy and you took a leak and then you came back and got ready for the second half of the movie. But that eh, times change. Boy, when I was a kid, we had intermissions. <laughs> you also had 10 shorts before the main movie. Too. Yeah. Oh, what? no, no. Now you have 10 and 10 coming attractions. You right. don't want to watch. We also we also had we also had real movies. There are yeah. two things that go on with those trailers. Number those one, those are Saturday morning movies. There are maybe ten trailers before the movie goes on today, and then yeah. when each trailer goes on, it's what I call the festival of logos, right? Where every person that ever put a penny into this picture gets his logo up there. So yeah. it's a such and such presentation of a such and such picture of a uh, such and yeah. such uh, release. Blah, 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 you know, and then you finally get the trailer and it's three seconds long. <laughs> and, and now and now what they're doing is, you know, they. my dad always said you never leave until the lights go on. Right. By the way, who's the that? Who, wait, who's that? I, I, I don't. I, oh, Brock. In. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Go ahead, bro. As soon they forget. <laughs> there he goes. He blacked himself out. Okay. Yes, bro. Uh, so you know they, they always they, they do this now of you know they have some of the credits and then they have this little little teaser or something that's going to happen, right? right? But now, man, I forget what movie we just saw. But actually, they had that teaser and then they did the rest of the credits and they actually had another teaser at the very very end. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. Really, uh, of, of the movie you were watching? Yeah, you know how they, you know how they do that. Sometimes they have like a credit, sequel. They have like a little snippet of well, something. Well, what it is, it it it's kind of like it's almost to prevent you from walking out on the credits. Yeah, exactly. right, let, let's just say Batman. I have to sit through fifteen minutes of credits to see the thirty seconds of the next Batman. Yeah. Yeah. for the next Batman. Yeah. Well, I, Marvel was nice enough about it. Once they got past their main credits, right. They would then go into that little snippet and then they would go back to the rest of the credits. Yeah, and sometimes we, there was something at the very end, but that was like put in there for all you people who are willing to sit there and get hemorrhoids. You know? <laughs> I think one of the best ones was Deadpool. <laughs> you know, you keep coming in like, you're still here. Why are you still here? <laughs> it was great. It was great. Hey, that that yeah. was a, 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 a parody of Ferris Bueller. It was a parody of Ferris Bueller. Because he was even in a bathrobe, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Would go home if yeah. I remember Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Like, yeah, are you still here? Yeah. 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 I always, if I like a movie, I will sit through the whole credits. Marjorie knows this. this is my, it's my way of applauding the film. You Me know? too. I do it. Oh, so you want to know who um, provided the donuts at 8 a.m. for them? Well, no, it isn't <laughs> that. It's it's like. Uh, uh, okay. Who is the caterer? I always wait for the key grip. <laughs> <laughs> the was. Well, for me, yeah, for grip. me, it always started with I like a song in the movie, and the song credits are always at the very end of the yeah. credits. Always. Yeah. Yeah. always. I wanted to turn. I want to do a little thing. I want to do a little thing in the credits of a movie if I ever did it, which would be a short film called Best Boy: The Key Grips Friend, <laughs> and then do a whole documentary about what a best boy is. And what a best boy does. Yeah, those are lighting guys, aren't they? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the truth. 
Yeah, the assistant to the lighting guy and the electrician. He is what? The gaffer? Oh, he's the gaffer's friend. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It was going to be called <laughs> Best Boy, the gaffer's friend. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. He helps the gaffer, right? Mm. <laughs> Can the best boy be a girl now? Shecky, you know this stuff. Best person. Who's the no. best? What's the be, what's, what does the best boy do? Did you have a best boy at Letterman? No. Oh, okay. I thought only Catholic priests had best, best boys. Boy <laughs> is... I knew that was coming. <laughs> I don't know. Dresses a set? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Here, here it is. In a film, crew, there are two, two types of best boys. Best boy electric, best boy grip. Their assistant to the department heads, the gaffer, the key grip, lighting and rigging, respectively. So there you go. Okay, but but the best boy is is works under the gaffer. Yeah. Right. Okay. And the best boy may be called the best girl if a female performs the role. Oh really? <laughs> oh, didn't know that. I think they should change it to the best them. The <laughs> best them. <laughs> The best by best by non binary binary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, very good, Shecky. I think you've got you got an idea there that probably will make it into the uh, lexicon of credits. Mm. I, uh, you know, I, I, but I just I always felt that, uh, you know, if I was somebody's parent and they had worked on this movie, and let's say they were the caterer. Or let's say they were something else on the film that, you know, you'd be waiting there to see, you know, Bob's name come up on the credits. Come on, give me an MGM movie from 1930. Here's the title credits. And then it says the end made in Hollywood, USA. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, when they said like, like, uh, you know, um, uh, um, uh, costumes, usually it wasn't the person who made the costumes or designed the costumes. It was the person who was the head of the department, right? In the, in oh, the yes. Early film. Guy Laroff or, or the infamous Technicolor, Natalie Kalmus had to have her name on every film as if she was... She probably had her name on more films than any human being in history, right? She was the Technicolor consultant. No, because she, only did, she was only working at Technicolor into the 50s. So, no. Oh, really? Oh, okay, because she was... She, but you would always have somebody under her, like Henri Jaffe, and that's someone who really was doing the work. But the reason that Natalie Kalmus got the job to be on every credit... Because of her husband, and it was in the divorce settlement. Yeah, her, her husband, Kalmus, <laughs> invented technical. Herbert, Herbert and when, Kalmus. And, huh? Herbert Kalmus. No, Herbert Kalmus invented Technicolor, color, and when he divorced his wife, part of the... Uh, agreement was is that she'd be made the technicolor consultant forever hmm. and i think she did it till she died right i believe so yeah did he did he die before her i think so because i think he was older hmm. when they married but anyway you always see the name natalie Kalmus, but uh, for instance, he did on, absolutely nothing on every MGM uh, on every Warner Brothers movie. You saw, saw the name Leo G. Forbstein. Well, that was that was the music director. He was, but he was the director of the department. But he didn't Correct. really. He didn't write the music. He didn't conduct yeah. the music. He didn't play. I don't even think he played an instrument. I think he was just a guy with a ledger. <laughs> or Douglas Shearer, um, Norma Shearer's brother, was the head of the <laughs> MGM sound department. Yeah, forever. And got a name on every single MGM sound film. Yeah, but today we actually name everybody who did something on a film. You know, I wonder did that start. The accountant and the accountant staff. Huh? It's yeah. true. They they do the accountant. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But my but, question, my question is, uh, yeah, okay. So I mean, when did the but when did the long credits start? I th I seem to remember maybe Star late sixties. I think Star around, Wars around two thousand one, or I I'm only thinking know Star Wars last night. So yeah. maybe it was Star Wars. I, that I remember is having just extensive yeah, credits. Before <laughs> most of the credits were at the beginning of the film, weren't they? Um, mm -hmm. Most well, yeah. no. In the old days, they would be like let's say MGM. I'm using an example. There'd be like two cards with those phony names let's call them you know the head of the department yeah but yeah. you never had credits at the end of the picture unless they were just the cast no. 
And no, the end, the made in Hollywood, USA. Goodbye. But mm-hmm. sometimes they ran the cast. Oh, no. At the end. Universal. That was used the cast beginning. is worth repeating. Yeah, but they started doing that. But the thing is that uh, in those old films, uh, they 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 didn't list much of anybody. They just listed the, the department heads. You know, yeah. and it was at the very beginning of the films. And yeah, that's where reason, you would see Douglas Shearer or Leo Forbstein or whomever. It, well, here's an interesting little piece of trivia. They did not, you may notice at the end of the film, the first name that always comes up is directed by. Mm-hmm. Okay. George Lucas fought for that because he didn't put his name at the beginning of the picture. All that came up in the beginning of the picture was the title of the movie, Star mm-hmm. Wars. Yeah. Okay. And then at the end, the very first credit that came up was directed by George Lucas and the Directors Guild complain that he couldn't do that, that they specifically state that the last credit at the beginning of the film had to be the director, hmm. and that it had to be put at the beginning of the picture. And he said, I'm not going to because it doesn't work. Hmm. Okay. Did he leave the director's guild right after that? What? He, he quit the director's guild over it. Uh, rather okay. than, And they finally decided, okay, if a director wants his name where he wants to have his name, he can do it because we're not really protecting him. We're only doing it to protect him by saying it should be in the beginning of the film. So that's what the first time that they ever had somebody who just said, screw you. There was other another problem. Uh, I think, And I can't remember who did took care of this one. But if there were two directors on a movie, you couldn't list two directors. You had to only list one. And I think it was Joel and Ethan Cohn who broke that rule. Mm. Not mistaken, but it could be somebody else. Huh. But anyway, everybody finding this interesting, especially this is you, so you, educational. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah, but then when you get but then when you get those MGM films like Wizard of Oz and whatever, there were seven directors on these damn films. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you got second unit directors and all that. No, no, they, well, no they, you they had uh, uh, direct. Well, I know that unit. you had at least two directors on. Wizard of Oz, because Over the Rainbow was directed by George Kukor. King Vidor. King Vidor. Okay. And, with the and, and, and the directed. main part of the film was directed by uh, Victor Fleming. Victor Fleming, who took over for Vidor. Yeah. So, but they don't but credit. Gone with the Wind had at least seven directors at some point, you know, huh. starting with Kukor and going, working your way down. Q-Core, what about Castle? Um, you mean they kept firing them, Shecky, or they kept replacing them? And the women in the films would still go to Pucor for direction, oh, but Clark Gable only wanted to work with Victor Fleming. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. were they all like that? Was Casablanca like that? That was Michael. No, Kirk- no, that was Curtis. That Kirk- was Curtis. Kirk- but but Waters was way. different in the sense that they were cheap and just wanted to keep moving. But you couldn't, you see, in those days, you couldn't list all the directors. You were only allowed to list one. Hmm. Yeah. And they, it always would be Victor Fleming. Yeah. Um, and he directed both Gone with the Wind and Wizard Gone of Oz. And Wizard of Oz in the same year. Yeah. Yeah. And believe me, he weren't there every day. No, no. I mean, he was there. He what he started. He started on, I think, Wizard of Oz, and then went over to Gone with the Wind. Right? I can't remember which direction it went. Everybody interested in this? Yeah, thanks. I just finished doing my bills. <laughs> <laughs> I got that locked out today. What were you guys talking about? <laughs> Jack, Jack Bishop took over for a little while. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. I'm sorry. I, and then I'm on a Monday, asking. the best boy got to direct. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My, oh, boy. my yeah. brother in law was a boom operator. So we always went, the, the movies he was in, we would have to wait till they got to boom operator. Of yeah. course. See, there's what I'm talking about. That's why you. Every time you came in a room, did you say, here comes the boom? 
<laughs> Call them boomer. My parents loved concerts and they loved movies, and they always had me stay at the end to respect everybody that made the movie. So. Well, my ex girlfriend, my ex girlfriend Kathleen, her brother worked at ILM, and so his name was in all the credits of ILM films, and we had to sit there and wait till his name rolled by. And believe me, that was later on in the list. You know, that was down to people who did the CGI and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, but I mean, that you do that. Right? And, and it's interesting because some of the movies that you see, then you see like some, you know, some foreign country and you just see all the people involved when they were filming there. So it's, it's pretty yeah. interesting to see how that film was made. So to bring everybody in here, what's up, Steve? Anything you've been doing that was of, of interest to the rest of us here? Nothing nearly as interesting as this. So. <laughs> wow. Are you being wow. facetious? Never. Moi? No, come on. <laughs> um, no, no, I don't. I don't know. You know, same old, same old stuff. Yeah. When are you coming up town? Um, we can do that soon. We should try and figure that out this month. Pick yeah. a Sunday. Pick a Sunday that works for you, and let you know. We'll talk. Just we'll come it. by while we're still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Better hurry up. Yeah. Oh, no, shut up, Jason. I think that definitely we could do a Sunday this month. So just let's figure one out. Yeah. Yeah. No, really. I mean, it, it, because of the coast is clear now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to what? We don't have to wear masks anymore in restaurants. We don't. Have to I have no idea. We don't yeah, have to. They, do, they do. do ask you for your identification, for your 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 card thing. No, I just heard on the that. radio today that they don't do that anymore. Right. No, that, 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 stops, that stops today if they want to stop it. It's up to the instant, the restaurant. Yeah. The card. Now the my question is, yeah. my question is, you get on a subway to come up and see your pal Al. Okay. Are you going to wear a mask? Yes. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Are you going to wear? I am too. I think Public. you still do. Have, I think I think they're still requesting them. Um, the they still transit, say you yes. have to on subways and mass. We still have to on the subways. Yes. Okay, but let's say they I, said I we don't have to. I've said today, and you can't even go into the building unless you have a mask. Okay, but let's say let's say they say okay, it's okay on subways now. Would you no, still, still wear still a mask? Wear huh? right. I'll still wear it. Yeah. Yeah. Would you, would you Shecky? It. Yes and no, depending upon what the crowd looks like when I'm on the subway, <laughs> how close I am to people. COVID <laughs> profiling. COVID <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'm going to profile. I profile the subway car. <laughs> okay. Pretty, pretty much a given what the crowd's going to look like in the subway, isn't it? <laughs> how, do you tell, how do you tell a COVID person versus a non-COVID person on a, on a train? They're coughing. <laughs> I think masks are just. It's, it's got to be a hot. It's got to be a higher COVID ratio on the subway than above ground. It just has to be. Well, you're you're in a very bad situation there because you're uh, after you've gotten onto the train safely and not been thrown you're onto trapped. the tracks. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you know, uh, it, you're you're now in a hermetically kind of sealed. In, in environment in which if only one person has COVID, it could travel a lot in that car. Yeah. You know, the, the 14th, I think it's uh, the 14th is Monday. Next Monday, the schools are going to uh, unmask. So in California. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, in New York, they did it today. today. Oh, really? Okay. I read something interesting, though. There was this uh, talk show host who it said, I read, died of COVID. And I thought, well, you know, he's probably one of those conservatives on radio when I'm not going to get it. He had both shots and a booster. Really? Yeah. And he, and he died or just got COVID? He died. Wow. Okay, do but anything, do we do have anything we, else? Not that I do we know it was COVID right. Right. or did he have underlying conditions? Right. Yes. That yeah. Yeah. He did have underlying conditions. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not 100%. Right. Yeah, we know it's not 100%. Yeah. yeah, but not many boosted people have died of, co of COVID. Right. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine, her, her and her husband were boosted and everything, and they both came down with COVID, but nothing more than right. just a day. A mild, better, yeah. worse than flu, but better than yeah. what it Enough could have been. Spend a day in bed. Well, all I know is that because of mask wearing and also not going out and all of that, I don't think I've gotten a cold in several years now. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if the masks do anything, they do protect you against getting colds. Yeah, so. Well, well the Asians figured that out years ago. Yeah, well, right. What would you say, Shecky, about, uh, about uh, the masks? You didn't, you, you're glad. I just think it's cosmetic in many ways. And it's really hard when you wear glasses, you fog up. Oh, oh yeah. I, oh, oh, yes, kills the glasses kills on me, like a Costco, where you can't see because it's fogged. Yeah. Yeah. We've always had that issue in clean rooms because we have them, we've had masks on since 2009 when we were starting to do flu. And so mm -hmm. we've always had a mask on and the, and the safety glasses in the clean room and you know, always fogged up. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, I, I got to go. I got to go pick up my little, uh, my little Adrian. Oh, you got to pick up Adrian. Well, give yeah. her our best. Did she enjoy the car show yesterday? Yeah, we saw Kevin. We saw Kevin Stopper. Yeah. Oh, wow. Kevin oh, wow. Yeah, sounds good. Yes, See, all these people out in California, they get to get together. Yeah, we'll get together this summer for sure. Yeah, then uh, maybe we'll. Uh, the The family wants to go to New York, so I well, just listen. I know, as, we're sorry to see you go, but you know we 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 still have Mandy here. So, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, if you're coming to New York, let us know. No, I'm going to surprise you guys. Alex says he'll be home anyway. But if you're coming to New York, I'll come in from Queens. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, no, we'll, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. we'll get everybody there. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Uh, we're, 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 def we're definitely yeah. going back in October. So, yeah. I'm gonna... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Let's pick up uh, uh, hey, I'll be listening. Okay. So no smart uh, stuff, Alex. Uh, oh, oh, once you're gone, we're not going to talk about you. What's, no. to remem what's to remember? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I love Brian. He's so funny. He's so funny. <laughs> so, how's everything in Georgia? Is it, uh, what's your name? Well, huh? when you guys were talking about, um, Sorry, when you guys were talking about the 30s and 40s movies or whatever, um, it made me think of, I watched the uh, Lucy and Desi oh. the documentary. The documentary yeah. is not bad. The documentary was good. Is very good. The one, the one that was done by Amy Poehler, it was so good. Yeah. 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 You liked it, right, Shaggy? The documentary, yes. Yeah. Amy yeah. Carter's I didn't mind, but it was kind of like who cares oh that was weird yeah the movie was kind of weird but this documentary it's just, it was just so I, I really enjoyed it i just liked that i liked i loved i loved lucy when i was a kid and always liked lucille ball and both what of them. they oh. seemed to play up very nicely was maybe how much they really loved each other mm -hmm. oh no until the day he died they mm -hmm. were still like and that made me so sad <laughs> yeah. Who went yeah. first? But he was a major he womanizer. Let's admit that. But you know, it just—it's what yeah. happened. This is, in yeah. case people don't know what we're talking about, there's a documentary on on Amazon Prime. Amy Poehler directed it. Amy Poehler Lucia directed it. Is executive just producer, or whatever. Yeah, and and it it, it it's called Lucy and Desi. Mm. And, yeah. and it's it's really very very good. But it's one of those things again where they have these tapes they were making in the fifties and things. Right. Right. Where and, they've got they've got it's not just me and you like I loved Lucy. You know, it's like you're hearing them. Yeah. 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 Was, well, and you know what's inter theory. you know what's what's interesting in every interview I've ever seen with Desi, and I was watching one that Letterman did, he always mentions how talented Lucy was and that she without her the whole thing would have been nothing. She was the program he always gave her credit. No, because he was the producer, in a sense, also director, creator, you know, the three camera and everything. Like, he knew that stuff. She was the performer. He was the innovator, technically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, but the other thing. He was, was the entrepreneur, let's call it. The thing it. was that, that I saw a documentary the other day in which they say, well, you know who, who, who uh, found and put on uh, Star Trek? Lucy. Yeah. Lucy O'Ball. Lucy. Mm -hmm. Did Lucy do it or did Desi give the green light? Well, up? Lucy was running the studio at that right. point. Yeah. I've always read it was Lucy. Oh. I always read it was Lucy too. Okay, okay. Because I, I wondered at what point he knows. What? What were we going to say? That. 
that the Desi Lou that when I well, especially just until recently, I never knew a lot of things about their company and yeah, what they did. Right, right. So I, I think Desi was more at that point. Can we call it consultant? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Like she might have called him and said, "Listen, I had this idea for this show that Gene Roddenberry pitched me. Take a look, and what do you think?" Well, I know Desi Lou. I remember seeing their credit on, for instance, the first time I ever saw their credit on something. The Untouchables. Was the Untouchables? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think oh, that was know. under Desi, wasn't it? That was Desi's show. Yeah, yeah. Because they did the original one when they were still married, which was on the um, Westinghouse Playhouse. But that it was, show the, was two part, the two parter that became a quote one. Actually, no, it was a two-parter on the main show, too. It was The Unhired Assassin, the one about Al Capone going to um, sing, um, I'm not saying, I'm saying Alcatraz. Oh, yeah. Alcatraz. Yeah, yeah. But they also showed the screen of all the things they produced. It was amazing. Oh, Mission Impossible. Oh, Go down God. the list. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I had no idea. You didn't know that, Mike. I didn't that know that. Girl. Well, you'll get that. You'll get that information soon in Canada. <laughs> it takes a while to get up there. By the way, I saw your prime minister today. Where yeah. did I see him? He's in. Uh, he's over there. He's oh, over he's there. in. He, he was in. Uh, I believe he was in London, wasn't he? With uh, with uh, the prime minister there. What's his name? Yeah, over in London. Boris. Boris Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson. Boris the guy with the hair. What's he doing <laughs> over there? Why isn't he at home? I believe he's negotiating uh, troops and oh, really? equipment and all that kind of stuff as to what, yeah. And, and he, had a, he had a meeting. But don't forget, Canada is still part of the United Kingdom. So, you know. Yeah, we're part of the Commonwealth. <clears throat> Are you we're still part, of, part of that Commonwealth? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They still say hail to the Queen. We really? still got her on the money. We don't say hail to the queen. But... Hey, by the way, you know what I found? You know what I found but is illegal. To, you know what's though. illegal to say in Russia? We still got her on the cash, though. We still got her there. <laughs> wow. Right? Good picture. Does she age? Bad, with, right? Does the money age with her? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I read I mean, today she's, she's moving out of Buckingham Palace. Wow. <laughs> Downsizing. I guess at 97, she wants to live up in Scotland or wherever, Balmoro or whatever. No, at 97, she wants to be closer to a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I know I would. Marjorie, whenever I've said, you know, we really should move out of New York. We really should move up north, someplace like that. And she says, got to be near a good hospital. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, because that's your hobby. You know, <laughs> the doctors. Uh, in fact, I was looking at your calendar the other day. I was at your computer and I was looking at your calendar, and there's like Monday a doctor, Tuesday a doctor, Wednesday a doctor, Thursday a doctor. I have a lot of issues. <laughs> <laughs> but nowhere there. Apparently, you've been married to me for a long time, and nowhere there does it say psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Family counseling. Family counseling. But um, yeah, I, I, because Mike, I was wondering about your uh, your prime minister. How, what's happening yeah. with all the truckers and everything? That's over with, right? Well, they've come to the states. Yeah, yeah. now they're in Washington D.C. Yeah, but they're yeah. Washington D.C. protesting something there isn't an issue anymore. Yeah, we don't, we don't want mask mandates. I'm sorry, you don't have to wear one. <laughs> Haven't you gotten yeah. a memo? But wasn't there a story over the weekend that the woman who started this whole thing, it's a scam? Oh, jeez. What which which thing? Believe it. The trucker thing in the in the United States. Oh, Some really? woman from wherever, and that she's just gathering money from these truckers <laughs> and uh, buying houses. Good job. Oh. Good for her. Good for her. <laughs> <laughs> the American way. Yeah. yeah, I saw an interview with a woman in in the convoy, you know, on the Beltway, and uh, they asked her what she was protesting, and she said it was she didn't want to be digit digitized. 
Digital. Digital. Yeah, they're, they're digitaling us. By the way, right this moment, the government knows where every, what are we, three, six, nine, twelve. Sure. They already know where we are. They're probably listening they in. Cared. Yeah. <laughs> Do we care? Well, no, that's no, what I always saying, thought was really like, stupid. I don't want to be vaccinated because they're putting a chip in my yeah. shoulder. The, 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 right. Vaccinate, but I put a chip in my shoulder, and yet everybody's walking around with one of these. Yeah. I know where you are. Yeah, you, yeah. Must, you want to know this is scary, okay? I'm sorry. But I get a piece of mail the other day from my oven. <laughs> <laughs> And it yeah. says, here's how many hours you baked. Here's how many hours you uh, broiled. No. no. So this it actually hooked yours up to the Wi-Fi? Yes, because it's hooked up to my Wi-Fi, and it keeps oh, yeah. talking to, I don't know, Oven Central or whatever. And then I, I, got, this my... net, I got this piece of email, and I'm going. I got it, too. It, it, oh, you got one, too? You got the email? Yeah. Oh, okay. But that's what I mean. So you're so worried about a chip in my shoulder. Where right now, if, if the government cared, they knew I went to the doctor today. This is what he did to me. Whatever. They know whether I bake muffins or not. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm still like actually, I always get the phone call. I got a piece of mail about my 2019 Volkswagen Jetta's warranties expired. As we have, I've said before, I have never owned one. Yeah. I get things about cars all the time, yeah. and I haven't owned a car since you and I drove out here back in. Yeah, uh, but two, cars I've never owned. 2003, we drove out here? No, I thought it was 2002, maybe. Well, 2001, you came out to visit. But the 2003, when you came out and we drove back. Maybe it was 2003. Yeah. yeah. We Where met we in 2004. Right. Hmm? Right. And I was already working at Sirius XM at that. Yes. Point. Yeah. Okay. So I but just. But no, but it's like, you know, this Volkswagen Jetta, where the hell do they get this information from? And why do I keep hearing about my warranty expiring on a car that I've never owned? Well, what they're doing, they're efficient. taking a chance. They, they, they just, you know, they do this to everybody. And then they take a chance that there's some people that do have a Volkswagen Jetta. You know, that fall into that category. Someone I that guess, but yeah. the good thing is they spent thirty-two cents or whatever postage is now sending me an email, a uh, actual letter yeah. about. Oh. Okay, now there's there, there there's something happening here. Either there are chance of three things: either he's asleep, he's dead, or he's frozen. And that's Vernon. Are you there, Vernon? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're, just, you're so still. <laughs> You were so still, I wanted to, you know, I want to put a mirror up to your mouth. <laughs> you know, at our age, you never know when you can go. You know, I might go here. Mm. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you. By the way, I watched West Side Story last night. Yes. Why? <laughs> I loved it. I loved I it. I thought it was great. I go watch the Robert Wise version if you want to watch a movie. I thought that was a terribly directed film. Yeah, I agree. I never liked that film. Yeah, I think and I've no watched 10 minutes of it, and that makes me not want to watch the new one. The women were very good. I could not see one male performer who should have been in this movie. Oh, Riff, I thought Riff was great. Oh, boy, I'm so scared of Riff. <laughs> well... Then obviously he was doing his work, you know. I mean, I just I liked the movie. I thought it was. I, oh, I, I thought, thought it was. A, I know. I watched it and I enjoyed the movie. I thought but what's I her thought name? Every male performer was dreadful. Yeah, but how about what's her name? That uh, the woman who played the part that Moreno played in the original. Anita. She was amazing. Oh yeah. You don't yeah, agree. but that's what I'm saying. The women were all very well cast. I thought every male actor was. Well, listen, when you go back to the been. original, was there anybody worse cast in the original West Side oh, no, Story than Richard Boehmer for crying out loud? <laughs> I mean, Richard Boehmer was horrible. You what know. part did he play? He played Tony. <laughs> and then he wound yeah, up. This on... guy was the gay. No offense to. Gay gentleman. 
he was the gayest man I've ever seen. Who? This guy? The guy playing Tony. No, he was the kid in uh, Drive, Driver, The Driver. Remember the, the film The Driver? No, not The Driver. So, um, uh, Baby Driver? Uh, what? Baby Driver? Baby Driver. Baby Driver. Yeah. Well, he was awful, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I'm not as bad as Bamer. I mean, Bamer was hideous. <laughs> well, Bamer was also 15 years too old. Yeah. Yeah. And he finally, what did he wind up on? Twin Peaks. That's right. He wound uh, up being the guy that owned the, uh, the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. The general hospital of the movie set. <laughs> you don't have another you can be in general hospital for six weeks yeah either that or twin peaks yeah yeah and hey, i'm Alex. still and i will defend to my yeah. death James well, what jason would be on a soap opera if you were living today say did you ever watch that um on netflix that cowboy and bebop i, I watched a couple episodes of it and it wasn't bad and i just never got back to it it wasn't, I, I, still, I kind of thought of you because uh, just the way that it's done, it seems like an old. Uh, we ju- old we just watched Reacher. Oh, yeah, it's that's pretty good. Excellent. You liked it? I was love it. it. Okay. I would give it a C. Oh, well, I'm only through the first three. The, but... only, the only advantage it had over the movies was he was tall. Wasn't Tom Cruise. <laughs> <Yeah>. Wasn't Tom Cruise. <laughs> I mean, if that's what the part has got to be, Tom Cruise was not Reacher. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. He was like yeah. more like. Yeah. yeah. No, he was a reacher. He had to reach him. Yeah. <laughs> reach him, reach him, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we watched that and then we started watching this thing about Elizabeth. What's her name? The woman who started that uh, oh. technology company. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 It's pretty. I want to watch that. Pretty it's fascinating. Good. He's a word. And, and uh, anyway, so what, what do you know? We've run out of time here. I hate it when we run out of time on this show. Me too. Um, but uh, we had uh, we had what's her name here today? <laughs> <laughs> what's Ooh, her name? Don't give me the finger. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Okay, that's what you did. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I'm an She's old man. Lady, I, I forget. I forget names, Mandy. It's okay. I, I actually laughed, but then I thought okay. oh, I'm going to stick it down. I, I mean, I just went. Next I, week, I, if we I forgot and yeah. I did it. Next week, if we do this again. Put up your name as Brian. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Brian's listening. It's, Brian just, definitely it's just a thought. Just a thought. Um, he just needs to not be so jealous of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, uh, Steve uh, Bender, always a pleasure to see you here. I would like to see you here. Okay. Get your ass uptown. Um, Why don't you go downtown? You already yeah, did. I did. I already did. did. We did already did, did and had lunch. We're coming up. We're coming up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Len LaFrisco, thank you. Come on by. Me, Brian. <laughs> uh, Scott, Scott Boddicker. Hey. Yeah, this will be hey. scary when Alex has the convention of all the, these people on the screen right now at his apartment. <laughs> Party. Charlie Wallace, yeah. or as we like to call him, Charlie Six Toes. <laughs> <laughs> How many do you have left, by the way? Oh, 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 okay. It's Charlie Four Toes. Uh, <laughs> Rick, thank you so much uh, uh, with the eye cup today. That's so much fun. I, lo- I loved it when I had that. And you'll sleep tonight and you wake up the next morning. He'll take it off. He'll look at your eye. He'll say you're okay. Get the hell out of here. And then he needs to see me next Monday at 1 50. So I should be here by four. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll be doing drops for the next four weeks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. That well, yeah we did have to do drops, don't you? Yeah. yeah. God, they were doing drops every two seconds today. <laughs> oh, really? So you had to take this it off. This one and... numbs your eye. This one does this. Yeah, whatever. No. Oh, oh okay. But <laughs> well, you, have to, you don't have to put drops in your eyes till tomorrow, right? They didn't tell me when to next do it. So I assume tomorrow they will explain the eye drop procedure. Yeah. Yeah. You just do. It. Yeah. It's just, yeah. you know, big deal. Vernon, good having you here. Always a pleasure. 
Mike Chisholm, Audi to Canada. Glad you're back. Love having you here as well. Glad to be back. Jason, always nice to have you on any of our programs, you know? And uh, it's more of my time zone. (laughs) Hi. Yeah. Why do you? Of course, I'm going to recognize you. You never do. (laughs) Well, what, Marjorie, what's her name? Um, My wife. My wife, Marjorie Miller. And of course, what's her name? Mandy (laughs) O'Brien. Darla. Huh? (laughs) Darla. (laughs) Darla. Yeah. And now she will sing the Chicken of the Sea theme song. And finally, (laughs) Edward Berger, who will sign us off by saying, That's all, folks. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody, goodbye. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye -bye. 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 Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. B